Welcome everybody, one and all, to uh, the service of the celebration of the life of Janice Lithgow. Uh, we're going to celebrate, tell a story or two about Janice today, and give praise to God for her, for her life, um, and uh, sing some, we have some song sheets to, uh, to sing from today. It is going to be warm in here, not much we can do, but maybe we should have this door open though. If somebody can open that door, let us, the doors are open at the back, are they Ron? <laughs> so, so welcome everyone. Um, a couple of things to say, we, um, the uh, reception following is going to be back at the community funeral home. Uh, so we're going to head right after the service, we're heading, heading back there. Please use the side entrance at the Halliburton Community Funeral Home. Uh, and uh, you can meet the, and greet the family back there. Uh, if you have a cell phone, right here. let's make sure they're all off. Good idea. And um, so we're not opening the floor today because if we did that, we'd be here till about six or seven o'clock tonight. Uh, but the family would encourage you to, uh, if you can't get, if you don't really get a chance to, to share some some stories or memories or your love with them today, hopefully you will at the at the uh, uh, at the luncheon. But please please go online to the Halliburton Community Funeral Home website, and they will be reading everything that people uh, have submitted there. <clears throat> Hear now these words from the scriptures. Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you who love us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadow of death into the light of a new day, help us now to wait upon you with penitent and believing hearts that as we hear the words of eternal life, we may have hope and be lifted above our present darkness and distress into the light and peace of your presence, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to call upon singer Wendy to come and sing, and Doris to uh, accompany her. Is that right? Linda. I always get that wrong. I, I knew by the look it was wrong. <laughs> When teardrops start
Thank you, Wendy and Linda. I'm going to call up uh, Jackie and Alex to come and share some memories and thoughts about their mom. <coughs> Today we are here to celebrate the life of an amazing woman, our mom, Janice Lithgow. We are all saddened today to be standing here, but honored to be speaking about our mom. How do you describe a woman so selfless, humble, caring, compassionate, loving, fun, and just an absolutely fabulous lady? People say all the time that words can't describe someone or something, well, when we talk about our mom, we believe that truly is the case. All of us in this room had the privilege of having Janice be a part of our lives. She touched each and every one of us in a special way that only she could. She is a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mom, a nanny, and a dear friend. Right from the beginning as a toddler, our mom was on the go. Friends with everyone, Huge smile on her face, laughter in the air, and always up for an adventure. She had a passion for life. She truly knew what it was to appreciate the small things and always have a positive outlook. Our mom would get excited about something and light up an entire room with her enthusiasm. She always thought of others and often at the expense of herself. She was our biggest fan and greatest teammate with our dad. Can you believe she took one look at dad with his long hair at the age of 15 and that was it? True love. <laughs> they have traveled an amazing journey together, one that they both agreed they would do again. There was always laughter. A few weeks ago, we were all laughing and having one of our family chit chats. When mom and dad were talking about when they first met, dad was laughing when he said, I used to walk an hour, one way, just to see your mom. And he goes, well, it was really for a kiss. <laughs> he said as he chuckled. Our mom looked over at him laughing, grabbed his hand and said, true love, honey. Dad will always be mom's Billy and she his Janny. We have often heard our parents say their proudest moments and greatest accomplishment together was having Alex and I. And more recently, she would say, I am proud of all four of my children, Jackie Lee, Alex, Heather, and Sean. Without a doubt, the pride and excitement our parents felt when they met their first granddaughters, Madison and Avery, will always be remembered. For the last 11 months, mom would always light up when she spoke about them. They made so many great memories and always made the best of the time they had together and with us as a family. Never a day went by that we didn't tell each other, love you. When we sat and thought about growing up with our mom, there's not a single memory that we aren't laughing or dancing or just having a great time together. From the simple moments of reading a story, sharing an ice cream cone, watching a movie, having a chit chat, to some of our great adventures of traveling the coast to coast of Canada, whitewater rafting, camping in Algonquin Park, skiing or enjoying a great day on the lake. She was the one you would hear cheering or letting out a squeal of joy, jumping up and down on the dock when you had a great ski run, or laughing after going through the washing machine rapids out of the raft on the Ottawa River. She was an amazing sport and always up for a challenge. Now, have you ever met anyone who loved animals more than our mom? They would flock around her, dogs wagging their tails as she laughed and spoke to them as if they understood every word she said. As a young girl, she had a pet rabbit, Terry, and as a young woman and adult, she has had her dogs, or more affectionately known as her boys, Duke, Rudy, and now Cody. And we can't forget her grandpuppies, Bauer and Carbon. She loved taking them all for a week each year, or rather, fall camp. And then with each camp came the story from her boys. One highlight from Carbon, it's written to Alex and Heather in mom's words, of course. 
Dear Mom and Dad, you won't believe it, but I went swimming yesterday. Yup, in November. Cody came in too because I dared him. I was sure he was too chicken to swim in the water because it was really pretty cold. Not that I told him that, of course. Nanny was cool with it because she dried me off with some good rubbing later in the afternoon. Oh, and there were all these people at the camp working on the building, so I kept checking on them every time they moved. <laughs> no way were they going to get into something that I didn't know about. And something is going on next door. Big trucks, lots of them, noise, banging, and more men. It was so much work yesterday to supervise and guard, guard dog all that was happening. I was ready to sleep at Nanny's feet while she stitched last night. I knew she'd like the snuggling. Our mom spent her career with the Toronto District School Board, retiring as the administrative coordinator of the associate director's office in 2007. She excelled at what she did and had a talent at working with people and an uncanny way with words. She was a successful career woman with her heart and passion always being in our home. She was talented in many other ways as well. She has sewn, knit, and stitched many items, most recently being her granddaughter's blankets and Christmas stockings. She always enjoyed painting, and since moving to Canning Lake has flourished in her art class, which we have all seen when she sends out her Christmas cards every year. She truly loved her art and yoga classes every week and the people she enjoyed her time with. Now, we've all heard about a midlife crisis, but I think in our mom's case, it was time for a new adventure, her motorcycle license. <laughs> At the age of 50, she did the course with Alex, Sylvia, and Donna. From there, she was off to experience new things. Our parents traveled on their Goldwing over 14,000 kilometers in just a few weeks across the US and Canada. One of their favorite rides was in the Blue Ridge Parkway to the Dragon's Tail, 318 turns in 11 miles. She could often be seen proudly riding around Halliburton on her shiny black shadow. The feedback we heard was, well, we rode 5,063 kilometers on our trip to the Dragon, another great adventure on the bike for your dad and I. Who knew that we'd be riding all over North America on our Goldwing in our old age? Well, speaking of old age, we did start to worry a little bit when we heard a nap on the bike. <laughs> As, especially on the interstate because it's straight and 120 kilometers makes it easy to fall asleep. <laughs> Although I'm a touch concerned that I'm braced to not fall off the darn bike. That was our adventurous mom. She was always that way with vehicles. Our nanny always laughed about her daughter, the race car driver. Backing out of their driveway, she was gone in a flash. Before she could turn from her, run from her kitchen window to the bay window, she was out of sight. As kids, it was all about the racing car road in the old station wagon, rather known as the rec room. She'd say, remember kids, lean into the turns to go faster. <laughs> uh, the van was their first brand new vehicle. Mom always said, it can take it, it's a truck. Sliding into the ditch on Scenic Caves Road in Collingwood, amongst all the screaming, we had, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> When she managed to four-wheel it um, back onto the road, she said, now kids, don't tell your father about this. <laughs> we waited a few weeks to break it to him. Her 40 gift Sunfire was her little red sports car. Had to be red. With the Subaru, she'd say, oh, that Subaru just goes vroom. Takes the corners so fast. On her motorcycle course, mom was worried about stalling for her final test. Alex tried to help with, if you have any trouble, mom, just rev it up and let out the clutch. After her mom's, afterward, mom said, oh, I pop, popped the clutch all right. Didn't stall, but I sure squealed the tires. <laughs> Despite all that, um, we both wanted to ride with our mom. Her last words over the exhaust sound were, you hold on tight and don't fall off. Uh, Skiing was another family adventure, both on the snow and in the water. My parents headed south for their honeymoon to St. Lucia, and from then on it was ski adventures at Mont Tremblant, Panorama, Fernie, and most recently Big White. And let's not forget our heli-skiing adventure. 
She was very proud to achieve her level one CSIA, which she completed with myself. Mom loved to yell and holler her excitement on the hill, sometimes loud enough to be heard off the chair when you're on the chair. She was uh, always displeased with dad for choosing tough runs or moguls, but she always smiled for us kids and skied it anyway. We would all go water skiing every summer, and every now and then would pipe, she would pipe up, go grab my ski. Last Labor Day, she skied behind her new pontoon boat to show the girls, her seven-week-old granddaughters, Madison and Avery, just how it's done. She popped right up and skied with the same smoothness she always did. She shared her love for the family sport, and we'll make sure we pay it forward. Now, sailing with mom was a lot of fun. Once aboard, she didn't like to scurry side to side, which was no problem, <laughs> until a big gust of wind came, and she was on the low side, soaked from head to toe on a windy day, but smiling and laughing harder than ever. She was always up for some fun in the water. Our mom always made sure she was there if we wanted to talk or share something. Dad always laughed that we were costing him a fortune because of calling to talk to mom every day. <laughs> she had a special way with words and always taught us to strive to be the best. She was our greatest fan, but wasn't afraid to give us another perspective. Now, we still think our mom has a sign on her forehead that says, talk to me. Everywhere she went, people would talk to her, tell her her story, or just talk. She had a calming and welcoming presence. She genuinely cared about her family and friends and truly listened. She knew what everyone liked or enjoyed and was sure to surprise them with a little something, or as she would call it, a just because present. Today our hearts are heavy. And we are saddened that our mom, Janice, has left way too soon. Sometimes life is not fair. So today and for a little while, we may cry. Many sad tears and some happy ones as we laugh about great memories. We ask though, then when you think of our mom, or chat about her, please smile, talk about her, and remember all that you loved about her. When you see her grandchildren as they get older, share your memories with them. Madison and Avery and all of the grandchildren that we have yet to meet will not remember her hug or hear her laugh. So please remember our mom and share your memories. To our mom, Remember, as we promised, you will keep all of your memories with you. We love you, always and forever. You are now our angel, and know that this is not goodbye, but rather, see you later. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. That was very bravely done, very well done. Um, we're going to attempt to show the slideshow, which was at the um, visitation yesterday, and I'm not really sure about the technology involved, but we're going to try. Uh, and maybe if you guys can zoom the camera on the screen, the ones people in the other room can see it too, <laughs> if it works. Oh, I'll get the paper.
it please the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, a fourth, a fifth, a minor fall, a major left, a baffled king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah.
that's it. That was, uh, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Kathy. <coughs> Lori Harper, going to read the scripture. This reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 4 to 8 and 13. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Thank you, Lori. I call Pat Moss to, uh, to sing. Pat Moss is a neighbor from Canning Lake. I'll turn Again, technology.
Thank you. Pat Moss. I'm going to call in uh, Jan Triggs to come and read a poem. Thank you, friend. We all need someone to talk to in our life, a friend to whom we go in times of stress or strife, a friend who's always there throughout the years, a friend we know will care and take away our fears, a friend